Uh, Senator Landrieu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for noting when this important hearing started the loss of the 11 workers and those that are still struggling with injuries. Several of those were from my state of Louisiana, from other Gulf Coast states, and our thoughts and prayers continue to, to be with them. Uh, I wanted just to make a short statement and then ask uh, my questions uh, because I think it's important to keep this in perspective. There are over 300,000 men and women that work in the oil and gas industry in Louisiana alone, and almost every state in the nation contributes in some way, shape, or form uh, to this industry, uh, both onshore and offshore. The work done by offshore crewmen is particularly difficult and dangerous at times. They are separated from their families weeks at a time, usually two weeks on and two weeks off, and we owe a debt of gratitude to the people that work in this industry. I believe some of these facts are important. Uh, Mr. Danberger, you outlined uh, some today, but I'd like for the record to put uh, some more into the record. From 1947 until today, there have been 42,645 wells drilled in state and federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico. The first deep well was 31 years ago in 1979. That well was 1,022 feet deep. Until that time, until now, there have been 2,259 deep water wells drilled. That averages approximately 133 wells per year. These wells accounted for only 4% of oil production in the Gulf in 1990, but today they're responsible for 60%. And we need their production. We must find a way to do this more safely. Since 1971, not a single spill in the Gulf or the entire federal OCS caused by a well blowout exceeded 1,000 barrels of oil. We're exceeding 7,000 barrels of oil every day and a half with this current uncontrolled flow. The record will show from 1947 to 2009, 175,813 barrels have been spilled out of 16 billion produced. That is one one thousandth percent of the total production. I think it's important to keep that in perspective. I also think it's important to understand, Mr. Chairman, have you have said many times that America uses 20 million barrels of oil a day. We produce less than half of that. Any constriction of domestic oil and gas production, either onshore or offshore, will only further put us in a perilous situation and an over-reliance of foreign oil. And in addition, we'll export some of these uh, problems to countries less equipped and less inclined to prevent this kind of catastrophic disaster. So my question um, to you, Mr. Danberger, is about this shear ram. There was a report done in 2004, I understand, by West Engineering Service that recommended um, that there be some changes because it was noted that sometimes the shear rams, you know, would not work in terms of multiple prevention. Can either one of you comment about why that was not taken into more serious consideration, and should we continue to go forward with deep water production when we know now that blowout preventers, which is one of the last lines of defense, may not function if there's something jamming that casing? Mr. Danberger, starting with you yes. and then Mr. Beck. Yeah, thank you. There were changes made in the regulations to require that operators provide data to show that the shear ram would effectively shear the drill pipe that was, in the, that was being used on the well under the worst possible conditions. However, uh, we do know that tool joints and other type of piping that might be in the hull can't always be sheared, and so I think more work is needed there to minimize the amount of time that, that such equipment is that is that you're exposed to that risk, and to get more data on on the performance of shear rams and, and the challenges, almost need a little safety assessment with each well right now until things are more comfortable. Mr. Beck, real quickly. Uh, Senator, um, in, in the context of the West report, I'm not familiar with that report, so I won't address that. But in the context of shear rams, I think it's important for everybody to realize that the use of shear rams is a rare occurrence. 
This is not something that's going on daily or weekly or monthly. It, it, it's possible that rigs out there have never used their shear rams in a serious event such as this. So it is the last line of defense. It is something we definitely need to look at. They, they will not shear all elements, all piping elements that are laid in them, okay? And they, they are subject, to, it is subject to human error for incorrectly spacing the pipe in across the BOPs to, you know, you have to physically say or measure and not place a tool joint across a shear ram. So the shear rams are built to, to shear a specific tube. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, as I conclude, I want to call on this committee again to relook at the revenue sharing proposals that have been put before this committee. Obviously, these are resources belonging to the federal government, but right now, Louisiana and the Gulf Coast states are assuming almost 100 percent of the risk to our wetlands and coastline, which is why I believe we need a new look at that provision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> as you all can imagine, uh, since this has happened, I've been down to the state on every occasion that I can uh, get there, just as late as yesterday was visiting uh, with elected officials and fishermen that are extremely concerned about what's actually happening on the ground today, as you all can imagine. And my first question is to BP, because this is the question, Mr. McKay, that I get more than any other question. Will BP pay? And let me ask it in this way. It's my understanding that you are the lease operator, that you're the responsible party under the 1990 Act. It is also my understanding that if you're found to be grossly ne negligent, you can, will automatically be pressed by the law to exceed the $75 million liability cap. But my question is, if you're not found to be grossly negligent, is BP prepared to pay the full extent of real economic damage, not just to the individual businesses, but to parishes and other government entities that are expending huge amounts of money to try to contain this incident? We've been very clear. Our CEO, Tony Hayward, has been Would very clear. speak right into the mic, our, please? We've been very clear. Tony Hayward, our CEO, has been very clear, and, and, uh, and we are going to pay all legitimate claims all legitimate claims. And define legitimate, please, for us. I, I, substantiated claims. I, I can't define the term. What, here's the intent. The intent is to be fair, responsive, and uh, expeditious. And to the, as to the $75 million that you mentioned, uh, we think that we're going to exceed that, obviously, and, and that is an irre irrelevant. So we have uh, been very clear we're going to pay the claims. And, we're, and the entire resources of BP are behind this. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, I may announce, because I'm happy that we made this step yesterday, but at least for the small businesses, and there are many small and large affected by this catastrophe along the Gulf Coast, that the Small Business Administration yesterday uh, has made clear that on an individual basis, the 6,000 small business disaster loans that are still pending in the same area from the last disasters we had can be deferred uh, and new loans can be given until these claims can, can come, you know, full circle. Because the last thing we want to do is for a region that has been hammered by storms and other disasters is to have this be a, another economic disaster for the people of this region. So knowing that gives some confidence. My next question, Mr. Newman, is to you. Are you all the largest drilling operator in the world? And if not, who is larger than you and what rank are you? Uh, Senator, we are the largest offshore drilling contractor. Can you speak right into the mic, please? We, we are the largest offshore drilling contractor in the world. To your knowledge, has a, uh, an, a blowout of this magnitude in terms of volume spilled in an uncontrolled fashion for this length of time ever happened in the offshore waters in the United States or anywhere else to your knowledge? Uh, the only incident that comes to my mind, Senator, is uh, the Ixtoc well in Mexico, which I believe happened in the 1970s. And do you know how deep that well was? Do you have any recollection? Um, I have a vague recollection that that operation was conducted from a jackup, so it would have been shallow water. 
Okay, I think, Mr. Chairman, for the record, that incident, which is well documented in shallow water, the Montera incident that was referred to by my colleague from New Jersey was in 200 feet of water. This is in 5,000 feet of water, 18,000 feet deep. Now, given that, what are the regulations for these ultra deep wells that you can just comment briefly on that give our people confidence that this deep drilling can be done safely? Obviously it has, but it wasn't in this case. Is there anything that you can offer that shows what you as the uh, primary driller in the world, are you called to special meetings? Do you have special requirements? Did you not anticipate that this could happen? Uh, with, with respect to the applicable regulations, which uh, have to do in our case with uh, specifically the blowout preventer, um, the, the regulations in the U.S. require uh, two control stations on the rig, and in fact on the Deepwater Horizon there were three control stations. The uh, regulations require that you have uh, three ram preventers and one annular preventer, and in the case of the Deepwater Horizon, the rig was fitted out with five ram preventers and two annulars, so in excess of the regulations. Uh, the, the regulations require that there be an independent means of activating the BOP, and in the case of the Deepwater Horizon, in addition to manual operation from the rig, uh, the BOP system on the Deepwater Horizon was, was fitted out with two automatic response systems and an ROV intervention system, so in, in terms of um, satisfying and, in fact, far exceeding the regulations with respect to the blowout preventer, uh, we, we certainly complied. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.